Welcome to the United We Scan podcast, the podcast by rural carriers for rural carriers. The views expressed in this podcast do not reflect the views or opinions of the United States Postal Service or the National Rural Letter Carriers Association. We ask that you please consult your assigned union representative for guidance in your local area. Make sure you like this podcast, share with your fellow rural carriers, and subscribe to be notified each time a new episode is uploaded. Please rate this podcast five stars where applicable and leave a comment or question for us below. Thank you. Now, here are the hosts of the United We Scan podcast. And welcome back. This is episode 28, take two. <laughs> now that we've figured out the problems. Yeah, needless to say, I am mobile tonight rather than on my computer. I uh, had a good week this week at the office. Management did step us aside for a, a training, a sit-down training, actually. We actually got moved into the conference room and had a 12-minute training on unscannable parcel and WSS, which was really great because she actually mirrored the actual talkings that we've been talking about what a parcel is. She actually said, yes, five inches or 18 inches or one and nine sixteenths is a parcel as long as it's rigid. And she did specify that U lines that are rollable are not a parcel. She wanted to make sure everybody knew that. And she also discussed the difference between WSS and everything else and letter, parcel, box holder versus WSS scan. And of course, somebody, not me, I will specify it was not me. Somebody asked, what about WSH? And she was kind of, eh, well, um," and I turned around, carrier discretion. And she's like, yeah, carrier discretion sounds great. So my postmaster actually said carrier discretion on WSH for now. So that was great. Did you get it in writing? I have 12 witnesses. That's good enough for me. <laughs> I'd still get that in writing, though. <laughs> Boy, you're, you're, you're easily swayed. <laughs> Well, it's the fact that she said she couldn't give a definitive answer. So until she gives a definitive answer, it's carrier discretion. Well, that's how I look at it. We, we had the same situation with in our office where a rural carrier specialist told us, "Yes, WSH gets entered," and then hey, I'll take it. And, and and we we took that to heart, and then they started screaming about it. And then somebody found out otherwise and rained on our parade. But I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> because that's, you know, carrier discretion. Of course. How was your week, Bill? I got I got to go to work tomorrow. You know, we moved into a, a new smaller town home. And, uh, God, you have no idea how much shit you have in your house until you try to get into a smaller facility, and uh, it's been a challenge. So um, we're we're still unpacking probably forty percent of the house. We got sixty percent done, and s- still don't have enough room. You know, thank God for the basement. You know, it, <laughs> it's it's a lifesaver. Well, well what's this? Uh, my clothes that's down in the basement. You know. <laughs> My wife does have a walk-in closet. I, I have a reach-in closet. And then she has another walk-in closet. And then she has a double-sided closet. Sound familiar, guys? That sounds about right. Yeah. yeah sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. Let me guess, so, 20 pairs of shoes in one closet? 20? 20? Yeah. What, what do you think she is, on the poverty level? I Come mean, on. you do work for the post office. Yeah, but yeah, she she makes six <laughs> figures, so you know, uh, you know, if, if you start at eighty and work your way up, you might get closer. I was saying just in one closet. I wasn't saying in all the closets. I I'm saying in one <laughs> closet. She she's but she actually, has the closet just for the shoes. Well, yeah. the, now the, 
the shoes are all the way up. It's it's the walk-in closet, and there's we have racks of shoes all the way up to the bottom of the clothes hanging up by a ten one by six our, closet. One of our listeners said, "My wife has a walk-in closet. It's called the house." <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. Yeah. Well, our our old house, the the fourth bedroom was her her walk-in bedroom closet, and nice. you know. It, it was. I mean, I had the, you know, the the standard side by side sliding closet doors, and then I had a uh, twelve foot rail for clothes, and then I had the shoe racks underneath there, and the shoe racks in the closet, and the shoe racks underneath the lounging chair, and then two thirds of the closet in our master bedroom was hers too. So when you guys go on vacation to the Cayman Islands, does she take a suitcase just of shoes? Uh, usually at least six or seven pairs of shoes. Oh, no. no. I, I take whatever <laughs> I'm wearing on my feet. I take my water shoes, my flippers, my snorkel, and my bathing suit. And I'm happy. And your pink song. Yep. Oh, of course. I never take that off. <laughs> oh, yuck. So, so, what was our topic for tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks well, we for that visual, how, though. We still need how Kristen's week went. Oh, oh, you know the normal. Monday was a cluster fudge, and yeah, that started off running one route, then it turned into a double, then it turned into getting moved to a completely different route. Yeah, that was fun. Um. I got things going on my new car. Uh, fingers crossed I can pick that up Thursday. Um, I'm only one, running one route tomorrow. I had to go in and case today that, yeah, let's not get me started on that. What happened this morning? So. Yeah, I don't think I'll pass the episode. <laughs> <laughs> three RCAs, case two routes each. I cased three, one cased one, one case two, and I still got all the packages that were sorted for tomorrow the, for the route I'm running taken care of. So, yeah, that, that's the Cliff Notes version. Pretty good. That's pretty I, I, good. I like getting the phone call today and, and somebody saying, Bill, how come the Advos are at three routes? I don't know. Ask management. This, hmm. this is Monday, right? Mm-hmm. It is Monday right now. It feels like and, a Sunday because we're actually recording. <laughs> and they do go out on Thursdays, right? Well, ours go out on Monday. Ours go out on Tuesdays. No, they don't go out on Mondays. Ours, ours are Thursday. Oh, okay. Well, each office is different. Yeah. Depending on the printer, you know, and then the supermarkets and whoever else. Yep. But, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, never end this story. Mm-hmm. So, do you have anybody else participating today, or are we just us three? I think we got Mike on here, unless he's going to be quiet. Mike, you joining us, or are you sitting sitting pretty? guess he's sitting I'm gonna pretty. Say he's sitting pretty for right now. <laughs> no, Josh won't be with us tonight. State convention going on right now and caucus and whatnot. So, yeah. So, the topic we were talking about yesterday and we'll talk about today is we've seen it on social media and we've seen the emails going around and stuff like that of management being told to have conversations with carriers about their excessive scanning. And we talked about this in the previous episode as well about how there's an email going around that if you have Eight weeks prior to the mini mail survey of data is what they're using to determine whether you're over scanning or not. And the problem with that is the eight weeks prior to the mini mail survey, 99% of carriers were only doing at most the six scans and they weren't trained on the rest of them. And now carriers are going, oh, fudge, I need to start doing these scans. And these carriers are actually being honest about them. They're being accurate. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing with these scans. And now management is coming down on it because, as we've seen, some people have said they've heard uh, talks from 
upper management on conference calls that carriers are over scanning supposedly and one some of the routes are getting 30 plus hours above what they're currently evaluated at now this is the big problem you have management deciding to turn around and police people who are over scanning but yet they're ignoring the people who aren't doing any scans at all who basically aren't doing their job either so and the reason why because it saves the post office money there you go they don't care about they don't care if you're turning around and doing absolutely nothing but the six scans the six scans is the only thing they're worried about 100 percent across the board literally you clock in and when you start load truck five seconds later you hit end load truck depart to route come back from your route return to du and clock out five seconds later they'd be completely happy Oh, even, though it's not, even though it's not it's... accurate, that's what management really wants because that saves them money overall. But your postmaster in your office, his budget for his office, his or her budget is 100% based on the mail that's going through that office, whether it's the city carriers, the rural carriers, or even the P.O. boxes. That mail going through that office is tied to the budget of that office because the more mail that flows through, the more money they get. The bigger the routes are, the more the the budget. budget your office gets. Yep. And that, that could mean more clerks. That could mean custodians. That could mean even more routes for rural, more routes for city. It could mean a lot for it. And they can have more supervisors, too. You could have... More routes means more supervisors overall. What do you guys think? That's what we don't I need think, more management. I, I think like we 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 explained last night before we got dumped um, 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 that the, the bigger the office, the bigger the paycheck for the postmaster too. As long as, as long as he's maintaining his cost. Yep. Yeah, you know, because he can go from uh, you know, uh, EAS uh, eighteen to a twenty, twenty one, twenty two, and make buku bucks. Right now, we have city carriers making more than the postmaster. We have clerks making more than the postmaster because of all the hours they're putting in. Yeah, it, it's it's a sad fact that a lot of these postmasters don't actually realize exactly what goes into their budget over this stuff. They aren't trained on this stuff, just like they weren't trained on the rec scans. We proved that at Mid-States when I asked the guy why he didn't make it mandatory. We proved that, that the regional reps weren't willing to train the district reps, and the district reps, without training, can't train the postmasters. And these postmasters and the two 4Bs aren't getting the training on even their own personal jobs. So. And then you get management, like you said, that would log into the Zoom training and then Walk away from the desk. Yeah, or minimize yeah. it and go on what doing what they were doing. Instead of actually learning this stuff and it being mandatory. Yep. Or maybe a test at the end. <laughs> but the other the other one is definitely the WSS. You know, a lot of people get confused on that. WSS is addressed. Flats or letters, WSS is addressed. Saturation mail covers most of, of, not all of the route as a mailing. It says WSS on it, but if it does not have an address, it will still say WSS because that's the rate that the shipper is being charged to mail that out. That's why it says WSS, even though it says local customer or postal customer or something along those lines, they're being charged the WSS rate for that mailing, but it's a box holder if it's not addressed. Just wanted to clarify that as well. So let, let me get this straight. The post office is charging the mailer WSS rates, as in it's being addressed. The mailer is actually printing it up as a box holder and we're being paid for a box holder, but the post office is getting paid as WSS. 
or or you can look at it that the people that are putting the addresses on it for the post office are paying the same rate as the people who don't put an address on it. But either way, it's about the same count for the, you're going to get the same number of mailers whether they have addresses on them or not. That's the way it's supposed to be at least. Yeah, so if, if you guys are like concerned on your scans and management pulls you in to talk about your scans, first thing you want to do is you definitely want to have your designated union rep with you as a witness. They can say, oh, you don't need your union rep because this is not discipline. This is not going to lead to discipline, blah, blah, blah. No, I want him there for a witness. Anytime management wants to mm -hmm. talk to you, you can take somebody in as a witness. And you can choose who your witness is. And when you go in there, ask management, well, how are you determining this? Well, you came up on a report. Oh, is, is there other carriers that are on this report? Um, can I see the other, what the other carriers are doing so I can get an idea of how they're doing it so I can do it right? And see that list. Because if there's carriers on there that aren't doing the scans, be, help your brother or sister out and go talk with them and be like, hey, I noticed from this report, because I got called out for overscanning, that you're not doing the scans. Is there anything I can help you to help you learn how to do this so you don't leave money on the table? Do something for your fellow carriers on that. Isn't that really the steward's job to do that? The, the steward's job, yes. But it's also on us to help our brothers and sisters out if we can. Because there are a lot of offices that don't Everybody's have a steward in office. Yeah. There are a lot of offices that don't have a steward in it. And if you're in an office that doesn't have a steward, you can step up and be a steward. You know, there's, a, there's a, a lot. People reach out to us and say that they have taken that dive. Yeah. There's, and it's, it's awesome. Yeah. It, it, takes, it takes somebody willing to sacrifice their time and energy to become a steward and we applaud that because it, it, it's a way to give back to your fellow carriers in a meaningful way well one of the things you were talking about in regards to the six scans that most people barely did now they're coming up on reports for dismounts because they never put them in and i mm -hmm. saw this on social media because of the fact that now it's a red flag popping up that they're actually putting the dismounts in when they're making more than one. And this is the problem of not doing it for the last two years, folks. Yeah. This is the information that where they, they set their base levels based on the last two years, and particularly the last year of May to May, 22 to 23, and said, this is your base level. If you go above that, it's going to get flagged. And now that people are catching on to the fact that they have to do these scans and make the entries for the dismounts, it's, it's catching up to them. And management's asking why. Yeah, and your dismounts, you know, is it's each CBU set you have. So if you have one CBU, nine CBUs, or even 21 CBUs in one section, that's one dismount. So if you have to go back and get mail, that's an additional authorized dismount at that CBU. And the key to it is, is you take the amount of mail you can safely carry to that CBU. And management's going to get on you for that. They're going to be like, well, what can we do to, to get you to carry more mail to it? I'm taking as much as I safely can. So the only other option you would have is to give me a satchel credit for it. And I explained this before, a satchel credit, you get, firstly, you get the credit of a miscellaneous time to go from your case to where the satchel is stored back to your case. Then you case all your stuff, get everything ready to go, and then you pull down your mail. Pull down your first CBU set that you're going to last. Save that to the end. Once you've pulled it down onto your desk, then you do a start load vehicle and you load that satchel during your start load vehicle time. 
then put the satchel in your cart, go load your truck, finish your duties, go out, you go to your first CBU. You time, the time it takes you to go and grab your satchel, bring it out to the door of your truck and put it on to carry it to that CBU. Stop the timer. Write that time down, go to your CBU, load the mail. When you empty the satchel, go back, refill. Time the refill time. You get time to reload that satchel on miscellaneous time. And you refill it for the next CBU set. Whether it's three pieces of mail or 3,000 pieces of mail, whatever fits in that satchel safely and does not damage the mail. And you get that time credit under miscellaneous time. That will actually give you more time on your evaluation than would the authorized dismounts going back and forth. Management does not want to do that. It'll cost them a lot more that way. But that's the plus key the if you... Satchel too. Yeah, plus they have to provide you a satchel. So that's another option for CBU routes to gain more time on their routes. But the other thing too... But that I've been told on unauthorized dismounts is you have to dismount with mail in your hand. You, you, if you get out to open your CBU, that you, if you, if you dismount to open your CBU to check and see, like to see if your parcel lockers are full or whatever, but you don't have any mail in your hand, you can't count that as a dismount. You have to be dismounted with, with something in your hand to deliver. Carrier discretion. <laughs> I haven't well, heard can, that. <laughs> that was put out. Yeah, that was put out at our state. So okay, that was put I out in our district. In yeah, I didn't hear that in mind yet, but doesn't mean it's not out there. But the satchel credit opinion, you should speak with your designated union rep on that. It's just my personal opinion on that. The, the base right. levels for the eight weeks prior to the survey, not the year prior for the scans. Yes. They went, eight went back prior. eight weeks to yeah. the mini mail survey. Well, I, I was going to say it, it's the same way with your your load vehicle function. I mean, on average, I have a hamper plus of parcels. Generally, we'll have to unload one, you know, to sort them out. And then reload, reload, you know, into the other, you know, the empty one once I, I get that done with the others so that I can, you know, segregate them and, and kind of stage them. Whenever you're reloading, you know, you're taking that stuff out, you know, that's loading time. If you got to pick them up off the floor, that's loading time. If, if a mm. clerk comes over and drops, you know, three or four parcels off, you know, the knocker at your case, that's loading time. Your advos, if you're loading them into your hamper, that's loading time. And if you haven't been doing that for the past year or so, then, you know, guess what, folks? That, that's going to trigger an alert on their part. They have not come to me yet because I average at least 15 minutes loading time every day, if not more, because of where my truck is versus the amount of mail and parcels. I'll give you a point. I've been doing my scans correctly for the last year. And even with that, I'm still getting flagged for the eight weeks prior because who knows what happened the eight weeks prior. I really don't remember what happened back in, back in uh, February, January, February, and March of this year. I can't remember how many unscanned parcels I had. I can't remember how many uh, walk sequence I had. I can't remember any of that stuff. So what I have now may be different, especially this time of year when you have diplomas and, and, pictures, senior pictures, and things like that, you know, coming out in the mail. Those are do not bend, and if they're parcel size, they're an unscanned parcel because you can't bend them to fit them in a box. They're a rigid article. So you're getting a higher count of unscanned parcels just because there are more of them. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee most carriers, and I will say most, I can't say for certain all carriers, but most carriers are doing the proper scans that they're supposed to be doing. Because I trust my brothers and sisters on the rural craft. I don't trust management. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're hoping they're doing the scans properly. Again, that comes down from management and management responsibility for training. And we all know how well they did on that. Oh, that's such a laugh. Oh, my God. (laughs) If I I didn't, you know, step forward for training in my office, nobody would know nothing because management knows less. Same. Same for me in my office. I had to train my postmaster on it. Because district and regional weren't doing it for sure. But that's the key is is this is this is your money. This is your paycheck. And you've got to think ab- about what your paycheck is worth to you. And you also have to remember that your subs in your office are part of your paycheck. And it's not always going to be your primary sub that runs your route. So step up and help your your RCAs out. Help them learn these scans. Help them understand what it means for them. Because they're the next people to run your route. They're the next people that are going to be regular carriers. They should know how to do this stuff. Your OJI in your office should be teaching them this stuff. But you should also be stepping up and making making them feel proud to know how to do this stuff make them feel proud in the job because they're going to be the ones that if you're out on leave like for Kristen and I we're going to be up at our state convention several days off our routes if our subs don't know the scans we're going to lose money on our rex stuff right Kristen yep even my little baby ox so it's important Which, that you take care of your subs and teach them the importance of these scans and what it means for them, just as much as it means for you. Yeah, one of our PTFs is learning that uh, firsthand because he's getting set to go. We have a carrier retiring uh, soon, and I, I don't think anyone's going to bid on her route because it went down due to RX to I think a 40k and you know he's going to take a pretty major pay cut when he you know when he uh, becomes regular within the next month or two yep yep isn't that the funniest thing you're going to become regular and you're going to lose money (laughs) yeah it's not unheard of sadly it's not unheard of that's true for a lot of subs especially if they're the primary sub of the office the most senior sub because yeah. they're working six, six days a week as a sub, working 10 to 12 hours a day, actually getting real overtime with it. And they turn around and they get the lowest uh, evaluated route in the office or the worst route in the office. And then they have to build it up themselves because especially if the carrier really doesn't care because, oh, I'm so close to retirement, I don't care. Then they're really screwed. And then they have to spend two, three the mini mail surveys before they get the actual full evaluation of that route. Oh, and that's take like that long. The route that I'll potentially be getting here come, I don't know, October sometime, when it finally goes up for bid and awarded, that, you know, she she gained three hours. She went from a 42 to a 45K. And that's because, you know, but since then, we've got a newer RCA on there. And she likes to not be in the office as much as possible. So how was, you know, that six months of four months of not getting probably all the scans it should be getting, how's that going to affect it when I take it over after the next survey? You know, is it going to be enough to bring it back down? Or, you know, am I, I'm just going to have, you know, work with the subs even more to make sure they're getting the proper scans. Yeah, and like I said, it's going to take if if uh, in these instances, you know, we got our evaluations a month and a half after the mini mail survey. So that's a month and a half after the survey that are not really fully scanned in. So you're literally looking at three mini mail surveys before we get the full evaluation of these routes. But the biggest thing is is those those surveys 
are the defining factor of when we get our evaluations. And our next one's not till September, and we won't get a new evaluation until October. But the carriers that started doing their scans after the mini mail survey are not going to have a full six months yet because they didn't know, oh, my route went down from a 42K to a 40, 41H or a 36H. They're not going to know exactly how high their route can be for at least another two mini mail surveys if they're doing their, their scans correctly. So you have to think about that when you get up there because everything you do now affects you a year down the road. Right, Bill? You're right. And, and people keep thinking that this is going to be happening every six months. It's not. It's going to be a yearly thing. It's 52 huh. weeks average. Yeah, it's a rolling 52 weeks with two mini mail surveys a year. So but the good know. news is, the good news is we've gotten rid of quote unquote special counts where the postal service can say, "Oh, we're not counting this month." Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> like the last five years. <laughs> the, la the last special count they had, they pulled a, pulled a route out, combined it with two other routes, overburdened them to the point where you know they were in the seventies. <laughs> oh geez. Then had to, then had to redivide them, and and then all of a sudden three H routes became K routes, and the other two still stayed high Ks. Yeah. And we have a rural carrier specialist working in our office. <laughs> <laughs> A yeah, special, uh, all right. I don't know about a special, special list, but yeah, but definitely special. You, you you can't make this shit up. That that's the worst part, you know. But the first couple of years, I I would tell my wife stories, and and she just shake her head. And, no, it's not true. You talk to your customers, and they they ask questions, and you tell them what's going on, and they shake their heads at you. You know, why do you have a third eyeball in the middle of your forehead? But like he was saying, you know, we talk to our customers. And they don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah, it's our customers don't even know what's going on. You know, they only see the, the back end of it while we're out there sitting in vehicles delivering the mail. They don't see all the work that we have to put in to get to putting the mail in their boxes and stuff like that. But as rural carriers, it's our job to take care of our routes, take care of our customers, and take care of our subs. And the, the biggest, the other big one that people are, are talking about is the rural reach and the stamp stock sales. Now, a lot of people have been talking about these and especially stamp stock sales. And they're talking about how they have to stop doing them because they don't get stamp stock from management. But... In the PO603, it still calls us a post office on wheels. And there are some carriers that still even carry scales in their trucks to, to weigh packages and things like that to make sure that people are actually putting the right postage on there. But if you are carrying stamps on yourself with the intention to sell them to customers and you get change in a box to put on a, on a, a stamp on a card, that's a stamp stock sale. You deserve that credit because you're going to go in your little pouch or your wallet or wherever you keep your stamps. You're going to take one of your stamps, put it on that envelope, and you're going to put the change aside to replenish your stamp stock out of your own pocket. And I know carriers that know their routes well enough, and that's being customer service. We know our routes that carry enough stamps to cover the sales on their route that they're going to have. Right, Kristen? Yep, absolutely. I've heard of some management saying that they're going to no longer allow stamp uh, stock and whatnot. And, uh, you know, that's just wrong. Yeah. And, I mean, right here in the PO603, it says that we can carry stamp stock, and it doesn't have to be stamp stock from management. We can buy our own stamp stock. It's in the PO603 which is 
the duties and responsibilities for rural carriers. That is our manual of how to do our job. You should have one at your case. And if you don't, get with management. And if management's not willing to provide one, get with your designated union rep about it. Because you should have the manual on how to do your job at your case. So when you finally do mapping with the LTM and the DPM, add your dismounts, boxes, and CVUs, do you get a Form 50 saying, we went up in evaluation. When do we see the difference in our paycheck? Honestly, it, if there is enough what the threshold is now for adding boxes and correcting it all, nobody knows. Unfortunately, that's you'll get an I don't know from everybody. If it is enough to trigger something, then it should trigger the 4241A shortly after. And you should get a new 4241A and a new Form 50. And yep. your 4240 should also change. It should also be listed on your 4240. And that's another but what one. Those, but what those thresholds are, nobody knows. It's that's another not one. what it used to be. Because I know in the past you get, oh, I only need three more boxes to go up. Or I need 12 boxes. or 30 boxes, you know, you knew what you, you, you needed before in the past, and now you don't. Nobody has a clue. Yeah. And then, then you turn around, and, you know, the 4240s is a big one, too, is management is now using your scans on your scanner to input your times for the day. That's a no-no. I've had, I've had discussions with union leaders on this we've had discussions with this and it should be the times you input on your 4240 the contract per management's contract per the upper union leaders is the 4240 is still your time record and if management is using your scan times and not your 4240 times get with your designated union rep because it should be your 4240 times on your time card. Yep. And they can change the times. That's the only thing local management can touch is the times. Not your start load in load times, but your clock in and your depart to route, return to unit and clock out. They can still adjust those as needed. Because mine's oh, always a mess anyways. A lot of them aren't willing to, they're lazy, they don't want to, it already auto-populates from the scanners, so they just go ahead and submit it. But that's important for your 2080 and 2240 times, especially if you're volunteering to cover other routes or you're on the overtime list, things like that. It's important for that. There's a lot that needs to be adjusted and fixed when it comes to this system. But Bill, you were talking mm -hmm. about this the other day about how this Rex is, is important for rural carriers. Do you remember well, yesterday? It, it, was it yesterday? God, it seemed like a week ago. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, no, it, it, it's 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 the difference between the old mail count and, and the new rec system, you know. And for years, you know, twenty plus years, we we cried about we're not getting paid for everything we do. Now with these scanners, you know, they can track everything that you do, but you're getting paid for it now. That's the difference, you know. We're, it's it's not perfect. It doesn't cover everything. I mean, there there's not a system out there that they could possibly cover what happens in uh, Alaska versus what happens in Miami versus what happens in Arkansas. Okay. But the thing of it is it's pretty close to, you know, giving you credit for everything that you do. But if you don't input it, if you don't put it in your scanner, it doesn't go into your wallet. Folks, that's your paycheck. That scanner is your paycheck. The, the, the same way, you know, I, I, feel sorry for women because they don't have belts so more times than not they will scan something at the back of the truck put the scanner down and walk it up you know to the door and then you know go back and hit you know deliver it to the garage or 
front door or whatever. Whereas the men with their holsters and belts and all, we, we can carry them with us and a package at the same time. If you don't take it to the door and scan it there, it's tracking you. I mean, folks, I mean, when, when a scan can tell within one foot whether you delivered it to the right mailbox on a crossbar, guess what? That's accuracy. No, oh, I mean, yeah, I've, yeah. I, I've actually had that situation happen where somebody put it in the wrong mailbox on a crossbar, and guess what? They tracked it right to the mailbox. And, and I, I've had well, those, I had those scans save my behind mm-hmm. at Christmas time. Customer said, I didn't get my package. I'm like, I left it on the porch. I didn't get my package. We pulled that up where I scanned it and it, where I scanned it right on the porch where I left it. And that saved yep. my behind because they were saying they never got it. And so, on top of that, I've, I've heard rumors. Now this is just rumors I've heard that people have gone in for mapping. And because they were scanning at the door in the truck, the mapping program moved their door spot to where their truck was parked to deliver it to the door. So you got to be careful with that, too, because it will adjust your spot depending on where you scan. There is a little geo uh, fence around your pinpoints. So if you are close to those pinpoints, it will give you that pinpoint. So you got to make sure you're scanning where you say you're scanning it. Well, and, and talking about the geofence, it's the same way when management says, oh, you have a package that, you know, was misthrown. Take take it and drive it down the street and scan it as, you know, address blocked or whatever. So they, they want you to falsify the information so they can get it off their scan reports. And that geofence is real because of the fact that for our property, if you're within a hundred yards of it, it shows you're still at the post office. And so, that's what they call integrity scans. And uh, there's no yeah, integrity right. to taking them out and scanning them like that. Yep. You tell them okay. if they want you if they want you to falsify a scan like that, you tell them you want it in writing that they want you to falsify a scan because that's falsifying a government document by doing that. If yeah, they want like you this. to go out and deliver it. And once you go out and deliver it, it's a second trip, three minutes per mile, plus load time. Or, or you oh, do no, the... load, load time no, from the load... scanner now. Well, yes, load time on the scanner for your evaluation, but you get three minutes per mile to go deliver right. it. Right. Yep. Or you do what Bill says. I'm not falsifying the information. You do as you want. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to know how many packages have been delivered to a mailbox from the uh, eye doctor's office on the other side of our parking lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I I'm really, I don't, to, I don't want to I'm know. I'm not going to, I'm not going to assist management in committing a felony. Nope, nope. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not going to risk my job for your integrity scans. <laughs> I'm not well, going to risk jail time for your integrity. That that re- that reminds me of a not a rumor that you know there was a package on my case when I came back and the supervisor said you know oh we found this while you're out I said well would you like me to take it out because you know at that that particular day I had time to you know do a second run and they said no 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 we'll do an integrity scan so being the type of person that I am and, and you'll appreciate <laughs> this. I recorded the tracking number and I went home and I checked the tracking number and it was received at 4 56 PM at Westchester, Pennsylvania. The same time she defected that scan. That's an integrity scan. It's a bold outright lie. The only integrity that they have is that they don't get called up and report the next day. Yeah, because they were scanned off property. That yep. whole sc- can't scan anything in the office after 3 p.m. BS. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unless you, you lie about it. <laughs> mm. You scan it out in the truck before you walk in. 
<laughs> no, but that's still in the parking lot. Yeah. Parking lot will show it. Yeah. 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 So if you have management that's telling you to do something that you believe is illegal, immoral, or dangerous, you do have a right to refuse. But make sure that if management wants you to do something, you get it in writing first. I want to make sure we're clear on this. I need it in writing to make sure we're clear on this. Because otherwise, it's his word against your hearsay. And unfortunately, in that instance, most often the carrier loses against management in those arguments. Can, can you explain the immoral one? Because I'm not sure after 25 years at the post office, what's immoral anymore? <laughs> Just saying. That would, that, would, that would be like trying, tell, trying to tell you to deliver naked. Hmm. Oh, I would. We, we know, know this. Would, oh, but okay. I'm saying, you know, that was, it was, that really was just hot. a broad generalization. But you know, you dress, you you dress in layers. You know, you dress in uh, layers so you can take off layers until it almost becomes illegal. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, like um, the integrity scans. That's an immoral thing. You have to have, you don't have morals to go out and lie about scans. It's also illegal to do that. Most immoral things are illegal. I said most because some states do allow immoral things to occur. And that's carrier discretion as to what's immoral. <laughs> well, yeah, and I'll bite my tongue on which states they are. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're in one of them, Bill. <laughs> no, the state of confusion. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The state of confusion is an immoral one. <laughs> oh, God. But no, um, it, it, it's a shame, folks. I mean, you know, we, we've known this has been coming on for what, 11 years now? Uh, it took the better part of three years just to get the engineers uh, together. It took, what, another four or five for, for them to kind of sort out what they thought they were tracking and how they were tracking it and what credits were what. And, you know, you come to September and they delay it again, even though they knew in August before the convention. And and, and yet management still did nothing to get their people trained and up to speed on this. And thank God for offices like mine and, and you know, my co-hosts and all that we, we made the effort to make sure our offices were aware of what was coming down the pike, what to be doing, and not, not eight weeks before the mini-mail survey, but a year and two years ahead of time. And since I was a test office, you know, from the get-go, we've been on this ever since. And still people fail to do it. And, and I, I cannot explain any more any clearly than to say if it goes in your scanner, it goes in your wallet. So you're responsible for your pay. Yeah, if you feel something needs to be in your scanner, it probably does. That's how I look at it. It's carrier discretion on that. But the biggest thing that I can say is if you feel you deserve a scan, put the scan in. Because only you can know whether that scan needs to be in there or not. Management definitely does not know if that scan needs to be in there or not. And if you have carriers next to you that you see something that could be a scan, hey, did you put in WSS for that marriage mail this week? You can ask nicely. You can go mm -hmm. around and talk to your carriers and be like, hey, make sure you put WSS in for the marriage mail. Make sure you put in uh, unscanned parcel for that because it's a it's a photo. You no, know, that that's that's the size of a parcel. Make sure you put an unscanned parcel for that because it doesn't have a barcode on it. Or how and, about this one? How about this one? You know, we all get different versions of the advos, red plums, marriage mail, whatever. And we have a separate barcode that we have to scan for the, the advo printer. In mm -hmm. my case, it's red plum. Mm -hmm. And then management turns around and tells you, oh, no, you don't put that in WSS. It's already entered when you do the ADVO. And I look at him, I said, are you kidding me? 
<laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. But the, the thing of it is, is management's under you know, under the guise that if you do the ADVO, it goes automatically into the WSS. Uh, I'm like, okay. <laughs> Help me out here, folks. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> because every Thursday, like, um, I announce, you know, do your ADVO scans and make sure you put them into your uh, rural carrier study. Yep, yeah, I do the important. same thing yep. on, on ADVO day. Now Just remind like me. Raw box holders that you get too. Those are yep. important to put in there. Even if they come in a tray from a plant and they're separate from the mail, put it in there. Because if it's in a separate tray, that means it did not go on automation. Yep. Even if yep, it's labeled please. for your route, it did not go through automation to get there. And, and explain why that is. I understand, but explain for our listeners why you would do that. So when they talk about WSS letters specifically, because we don't have S FSS flats anymore, when they put the mail through the automation process to sort it for your route, it automatically takes a picture of the mail reads the barcode underneath the address or in the lower corner of the thing. There's also orange bars on the back of the envelope that are part of the automation process. And the biggest thing is, is that barcode on the front and the back direct it to your route. Putting it through the automation assigns it to your route through the informed visibility, which is different from informed delivery. But the informed visibility is their way of tracking mail through the system. That's part of those SPM scans you get. And it actually routes it to your route in order DPS. But if they send it to you in a tray where it's, even if it's in order or something, most likely that was done by the shipper who put it together and sent it off to the plant to be sorted to the routes. It's literally grabbed by the people at the plant and put on a cart to go to your route, to go to your office. That's it. They don't put it on the machines. They don't run it through the machines. They just literally transfer it from one cart to another, and it goes to your office. So you got to make sure you input that in because it's not counted on the DPS machine. If it's in your DPS, it's counted. But if it's separate, it's not. And 95% of that, if not higher, will not have any barcodes whatsoever on it. And even if they do, it'll be the front one and not the one on the back. That's part of the informed visibility. Right. Because it won't that's have the, the orange bars. Yeah. That's from the printer. Correct. Because that's from the DPS machine to sort it to your route. And that's, that's the other thing is some people, they'll throw mail back saying it's forwarded or it's been put to their wrong office through the DPS. They'll put it up in their 3M case and it'll come back to them over and over because of those orange bars on the back. Even if you block out the barcode on the front, if the orange bars on the back aren't blocked off, the, the machine will read that and send it right back to your route. Yep. There's a lot, a lot to this. There's a lot to it. But the key to this is, is, is the important part is, is we've grown in the technology that we use. Back, back before all the scanners and stuff like that, mail was hand routed. We didn't have DPS. And then we got DPS. Then we got scanners. And then we got FSS for a while there. And then we got rid of FSS because it was never profitable. And now we have Rex. Technology has been slowly improving at the post office. Very slowly because they don't like change. And that's the big thing here, too, is a lot of people don't like change. But this is going to benefit us in the long run as long as we learn to step up, do our jobs, and tell management we're doing our jobs correctly. That's the big thing. 
and anybody that gets called up on their scan activities, they can explain that, you know, hey, I, I never knew. I never, n- never, you know, followed the program. I did. I wasn't trained in this. And that's the biggest one. I was never trained in this, even though I trained m- most of the people that management's responsibility was to do the training, not mine. So if people have a fallback, it's because management failed to do the proper training. Just ask the question straight up. Where's my day of day of in classroom training on this? Mm-hmm. Do you have record of my day of in class training? Because you should have had a full day's training on this system. I can sit there and I can do a two hour training on it, but it's not going to hit home. People need to sit down, have a actual classroom time over this and learn the ins and outs of each specific scan, and they're not providing that. So you have to go by what your local designated union rep has given you and the information you can glean from other sources that you find reliable on that. Hint, hint, activity scans in this podcast. (laughs) Sorry. Hashtag shameless plug. (laughs) (laughs) But you you want to learn as much as you can about these because this is your paycheck. And that's the biggest thing we're stressing. This is your wages. This is your benefits. And this is part of your work conditions. And this is what you and your fellow carriers in your office need to know. And you need a place to go to get that information. And the best place you can go to get that information is your local designated union representative. We can only give you our opinion on it. But your resource should be your union rep. They should be the ones that are properly trained on this. They should be the ones to be able to answer any question you have on it. And they should be the ones you have conversations with about what management's doing to you. They're your resource. They're supposed to be there for you. Go to them. If you don't know who they are, you can find out through the NRLCA website. You can contact your district rep to find out. You can contact National and ask them who your representative is. You can also use a resource on Facebook. Ask people around your area, hey, do you know who my union rep is? Anybody can help you find out who your rep is and get you the information you need to contact them. So reach out, get the information from them. Because we may not be 100% accurate. I mean, hell, I know I've made mistakes talking on this podcast. I'm the first Again, one to admit. It, it's like that old telephone game we all played in elementary. It starts off at one, and by the time it gets to the end, it's completely different. We, we, yeah, we reach played, out. We played different games in my school. <laughs> well yeah we know the wheel, the wheel wasn't even invented when you were in high school <laughs> oh there you go yeah. <laughs> but no it, seriously it's it's important for us to stress that the biggest resource out there is actually the union as much as pe- people talk about how they aren't getting information and things like that, right on the home page. As soon as you log in, right there is the Rex resources, has the comprehensive guide, has the Q&A where they answer all the questions about Rex, everything you need to know about it. Yeah, I'm so old school, I still get my uh, notices on parchment. Meh. <laughs> Written in quill? Yes. Well, it's, it's an upgrade. I used to get it on papyrus, but now it's parchment. Yeah. <laughs> For all you Egyptologists out there. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, we, support, we support our union members, whether they are deuce paying or non-deuce paying. We are all brothers and sisters in this craft. I'm Let's not forget it. the RCAs. Well, the, you know, they're in the union or not. Also, so exactly or the arts too. The arts That's... too. We support the arts. <laughs> oh yeah, if we have them. Yeah, think... yeah. <laughs> the, 
the arcs went the way of Noah's Ark. Yeah, uh, really, they did. It's just. You know what's yeah. funnier than what's funnier than not having a, a an ark, not ever seeing a hark, the holiday <laughs> guys. You know. <laughs> oh, jeez, oh, it's getting deep around here. Yeah, when, <laughs> when they sent when they sent them flyers out to you know all the retired employees, yeah. two of them live on my route, and and they specifically came out to laugh with me about <laughs> <the> mailing. <laughs> Or you could just be the only RCA with six routes and an ox at Christmas time and reap those benefits, but and still make it happen. Uh, yeah, I think I'm still recovering six months later, but yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, you need that time at state convention to wind down from it. Oh no, I'm going. I've got my complete getaway in July. I'm good. So well, yeah. Josh, Josh is at his this week. I'm at mine next week. We're James and I week. will be at, yeah. Yeah. That's behind. I've already had mine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Too Good to have it on the last weekend of, of June. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> is there anything else you guys have in mind to talk about, about management being on carriers? Well, in the famous words of Bill May, don't get stressed, cause it. So, yeah, you know, when they when they turn the tables on you, like we said, ask for the reports for the other routes. Let, let's see a comparative in regards to what everybody else is doing. Is everybody else getting these uh, INIs or PDIs or, you know, dis formal discussions in regards to our, your scan activities? You know, don't, just don't sit there and take it, you know. Yeah, you can be, I'll say, quietly aggressive in defending yourself. And if you, you know, if you're not comfortable to do that, then you know, guess what? Get a hold of your local union rep or your ADR area steward, and say, look, you know, I, I'm I'm being harassed. And I'll tell you what, you know, harassment doesn't last longer than five minutes in my office because you know, they have me. But the thing <laughs> of it is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing of it is, is that you you do not have to put up with that type of atmosphere at work at all. Nobody should ever yell at a carrier on the floor. Nobody should ever demean anybody on the floor. And if they're going to do it in the office, then, you know, they better do it with either their union rep or a witness. So there's corroboration in regards to what was said and who said it. Stand up for yeah, yourself. Never, never go alone with management. No. No. Nope. Because, because it's your word against theirs. And we know they don't lie. Oh. Nope, not at all. No. They have no reason to protect their position as a manager. No, no. <laughs> and they have no reason to place responsibility on others for their inability to do their job. As they say, management has the right to mismanage an office in any way they deem fit. Oh, the and, first time I heard that, I flipped. And anything you say can and will be misconstrued, misinterpreted, and misapplied to be used against you. Amen. Yep. Yep. I learned that from a lawyer. <laughs> so, so did I, but I still spent five years in jail. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's be that's because of how you talk to him, Bill. Well, at least he at least he got seven years. <laughs> you got you got contempt of cop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I once did beat uh, a cop at, at his own uh, story here back in the years before we had pitcher licenses. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I spent a year and a half on a motorcycle traveling the country up in the Canada, Alaska. I come back and I look like something out of uh, Woodstock. <laughs> got caught. I, I got caught two blocks from my house speeding. Only ticket I got in eighteen months. Okay. <laughs> I turned around. I showed up in court, clean cut suit, haircut, and everything. And the officer couldn't identify me 
because of the dramatic change. And the judge <laughs> looked at him. He says, well, if you can't identify the defendant, he said, I have to throw the case out. He goes, this is a farce. I'm like, you know, sorry, I hate to tell you, but I'm me. <laughs> Birth certificate, everything. High school pictures. And I said, you know, I don't know what he's talking about, Your Honor. Wait, Bill, you had hair. <laughs> <laughs> I not only had hair, I had a ponytail. Oh, wow. Yeah. But working, but working as a steward, you pulled it all out. <laughs> oh, no, no. That, that, that was, you know, marriage. Oh. oh. <laughs> Bill probably has That's the same That's why I don't get married. I think Bill and I had the same problem. I, I had a long, my hair and I had a long falling out, you know, so it's. Get it? Falling out? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Such, a, but, um, such a bad joke. It really was. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> I, I, you know, I always say my, my hair is hanging on by a thread. Mm. I got to cover my gray. Should, should say hanging on by a strand. more appropriate huh. not trying to correct your uh, but you know this is this is more appropriate it, it just sounds like you're uh dragging that split ends there well you sounds like you're splitting hairs <laughs> okay guys <laughs> <laughs> you know you know these jokes make me want to bob and weave uh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back on topic just, here. So, all right, guys. <clears throat> I think we should well, wind this down now. <laughs> yeah, a little light in the mood there for everybody. You know. Yeah. Show our lighter side. Yeah, We're we do have one. <laughs> we can have fun while trying to help our fellow carriers. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we do oh, our as a, effort. As a reminder, we will be off next weekend since uh, Mike will be gone and James and I will be at state convention. So, so, yeah, yeah. So we won't be around next week. So it'll be two weeks for the next Supposedly. one. Supposedly. Supposedly. As long as, we get the as long as we get the recording out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jab, jab, jab. I, you know, in the both times that I've lost the episode, it's been me. So it's it's all good. I, like I said, I may have to start that GoFundMe for a new computer. <laughs> well, at least you have a track record now. I do. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I got two fifty. I'll send you. Yeah. I'll, I'll make it computer. all in quarters so. though. Yeah, <laughs> in a flat rate box. <laughs> oh, no, 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 two dollars and fifty cents taped up together. <laughs> oh, you meant two fifty, two hundred fifty. Okay, I pay a lot of quarters. Yeah, when he said when I when he said I have two fifty for you, I thought he was going to send you two half dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Just send me your send me your address. I'll send you a check. Yeah. Okay. No, really. I'll see you in a couple months, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there's a Best Buy up the road from where convention is, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so. You still got to you guys still got to pay you for the table too. Yeah, we'll we'll take that up. Um, just to, if anybody knows, I did reserve ten spots for banquet. I think I have two maybe three open spots i'll have to double check and once everybody's confirmed and so if anybody makes it and they didn't get a banquet to, um ticket and they want to come sit with us i know i'll have at least two open so you better, you better get a table for 40 then that'll be a fun night yeah we don't <laughs> we don't we don't bite we just nibble speak for yourself mm. <laughs> <laughs> That didn't sound final right, did thoughts? it? No. no. <laughs> Bill, what are your final thoughts on this evening? Oh, well, you know, uh, mm. thank thank God it was a, a day off for most of us. 
<laughs> Sorry, Kristen. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, another beautiful day. And uh, just everybody, please, you know, put the effort into your job. You know, learn what you can. Five minutes, ten minutes a night, you know, half an hour for a week or, you know, any time that you put in to educating yourself about your job, your responsibilities, your duties, the more likely that you're going to increase your paycheck, learning how to do your job correctly. Um, management's not going to help you. If you do the six scans, they'd be happy as pie because that's all they're going to pay you on. If you don't do the rest of the scans, the post you do, certifieds, money order applications, stamp stock sales, rule reach, if you don't do them, you can't get paid for them. Plain and simple. So do the job as best as you can. Be safe. Get home to your loved ones because I, I truly mean that every carrier, you know, is special to somebody. And you're all in our hearts and our, our minds and prayers that you go do your job and get home safely to your loved ones. All right, I had to go out and come back in again real quick, but uh, I'm going to follow up real quick with the question that was asked of carriers going to be out for six to eight weeks. Can they leave written instructions without getting in trouble so we can make sure they do the work, especially the line of travel? Absolutely. I mean, I still have regular carriers. If they, I know they're going to be gone and there's something special. They leave notes at the case. When I first started my old regular, we had a notebook we left at the case all the time. So, you know, if I was only working my one day a week, she'd write anything important in there, and we'd have a bookmark where we left off. Then I knew if she was going to be gone for a week, two weeks, whatever it was, then I would write down anything important and leave the bookmark where I left off. Definitely. A communication, whatever you can leave for communication helps completely. Sure does. But yeah. Yep. On that note, guys, you know, tomorrow's going to be a big day. Um, Got to love the Monday, the day after Monday holiday. And so be safe out there. Don't rush it and be unsafe. But uh, do your job. Do your jobs correctly. Again, we'll be off next week. So, Mike, final uh, thoughts? No, just have a good week, everyone. I'm going to be uh, a meeting to go to tomorrow, and then I'm off for the rest of the week going to a family reunion out of town. So just be safe out there. Do your job right. And we'll see you when, when I get back. Okay. My, my final thoughts are we're all in this together. We all have to support each other. We all have to take care of each other because we are the rural union. We are the rural craft, dues paying and non-dues paying. We need to take care of our brothers and sisters, especially in this time with management getting on everybody, you know, be a witness for one of your carriers in your office if you have to help them understand what these scans are, because even if it's not your route, you may be helping the next RCA who takes that route. Help your RCAs out because they're going to affect your your evaluation just as much as you are, especially if you get injured on the job. You could be out two, three, six weeks, and they're there doing the scans. So them having the knowledge of all the scans that need to be done That's is imperative to your route. So take That's care of each other. And as Josh would say, you know, if you get overwhelmed, take a step back, take a deep breath, step back into it, and get back to work. Do the job to the best of your ability. And remember, at the end of the day, go home to your family because you're the most important delivery. Kristen, your final thoughts? Yeah, I mean, just following up with everybody else. You know, it's do your job the way that you're supposed to do your job. Do your job as if you, you the way you've done it this whole time. You know, and if you have that extra trip to the door, put that scan in. And it's just just do your job. Do your job correctly help the newbies out there that are still learning so they understand it better. I mean, I'm still working with the two other new guys, and I've got another one coming in, uh, going to Academy this week. So, you know, it's we're kind of – got to remember is when we're in the office, we work as a team. When we're out on the route, we're on our own. 
and it's our responsibility to keep everything going. So on that note, guys, have a safe week. And again, we'll be back in two weeks. <laughs>